Welcome back to another FL Studio 20 basics video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the channel rack or step sequencer in FL Studio. We're going to be looking at all the basic features and then going into a few more advanced sort of tips and tricks. And we're also going to be programming a beat just to show you how easy it is to use it. The reason it's called the channel rack is because it's where all of your channels are stored inside FL Studio. These could be samples, automation clips, VST instruments, just about anything that you're using in your project is going to be stored here. I've already loaded up some samples and some loops, but to add more samples, Samples, it couldn't be easier. You can go straight into your packs folders inside FL Studio and just load in samples by dragging and dropping them in. To delete a sample, it's really easy. You just right click on it, delete the sample, just like that. To add in VST instruments, you can click this plus button down here, add in FL Studio instruments, or go to more plugins to add your third party plugins. There are other ways to add plugins in. You can use the plugin picker just up here and sort of drag and drop into there as well. The channel rack is gonna show you all of the different samples and channels you have in your project, and you can check them out at any time by left clicking on a sample. You can demo it. There's so many ways to tweak and design your sound inside this small sampler channel here, but I'll probably go into that in more detail in a future video. So if we go back to the channel rack, I'm just gonna sort of give a basic overview. So from the top left, we have the channel rack options. So we're gonna be looking at this more in just a minute, but this is your options menu. To resize the channel rack to get more steps, you can drag out from the right, and you can also drag up and down from the bottom to resize it vertically. And in the corner, you can do both at the same time. Going to the top bar again, if you click inside this, you have your different groups, and we're gonna be creating a group in just a minute so that you can choose between audio, unsorted, or just everything. Across to the right, we have the ability to resize so that we can read, because I can't read what that is or what this is, so I can just extend it out sideways. To the right is the play and pause button, specifically just for the channel rack. Further to the right, we have the swing amount, and I'll be showing in detail what this does in just a few minutes. Further to the right again, we can open the graph editor to change more parameters about these steps. Let's start programming a simple drum beat so that we can actually really get a feel for how this thing works. The first thing I'm gonna show is the step sequencer. So these show little steps in your beats or in your bars. If you left click, it selects it. And if you right click, it deletes them. And you can left click and drag. You can right click and drag as well. I'm just gonna add a kick here. I'm just gonna give us a four on the floor pattern and I'm gonna click play. The next thing I'm gonna do is extend the pattern out so that I have a little bit more room to play with. And I'm gonna add kicks on all of those as well. An easier way to add those steps in would have been to right click on the kick channel and I've got lots of options here, and then I could fill each four steps. I'm going to add a clap and a snare here. And this will be a good chance to show some of the other features. So over here on the left hand side, we have a mute and a solo button. So I'm just gonna mute the clap. Just to the right of that, we have the channel panning. So I'm gonna pan the clap to the left, then to the right. And then to the right of that, we have the channel volume, so I can take the clap down or up in volume. Now that we have a few steps open, I'm gonna show these two options up here. And the first one is gonna be the piano roll here. So if I click the button up here, we get the piano roll view instead of the step sequencer. And although we can't directly edit these, if I left click, it opens up the piano roll for that sample. So in this case, I have the snare, and I can move these around however I like. Now I have a lot more control over where I can move the samples and I can add in samples wherever I want at all sorts of different pitches. Left clicking again will take me back to the playlist. So I'm gonna close that option. And the next one we're gonna look at is the graph editor. So this gives us a lot of information about the, uh, the note properties. So we get the note pitch, just like we did in the piano roll. We can change the velocity so that they're played soft or loud. We can change the fine pitch, the panning, and we can also shift them in time slightly. And I'm gonna demonstrate some of these features in just a moment. So I'm gonna fill out this pattern, but I'm also gonna play it along with the song. Now that we have a pattern filled out, I'm going to show how I can group all of these together. So you may have noticed this little green box here, and this green box shows which sample or channel you've selected. So you can select a channel by clicking, but this often pulls up this box, which is quite annoying because it gets in the way. 
So you can just select this here. Now, if you hold shift and drag or click, you can select a group and then there's lots of things you can do with a group. If you go to the channel options, you can move a group, you can group them together. You can also do stuff like coloring them as a gradient. But if I group them, which would have been the shortcut key of Alt G, I can create a group name, which is going to be drums. And now if I go back to the groups at the top, we have all audio and drums. This is especially useful when you have 80 or 90 different channels and samples. Otherwise, you're going to be scrolling through the channel rack all day. Whilst I'm here, I'm just going to select them all again and I'm going to go back and color them just to show you the gradient. So you can select the first color for the gradient, which I'm going to make red. And you can select the second color for the gradient, which I'm going to make white and then you can color them in a gradient just like that. You can choose any two colors. Now that we have this basic pattern put in, I'm going to use the graph editor to make it a little bit more unique and a little bit more human. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the hi-hat and I'm going to select the graph editor on the velocity. And I'm just going to take each of the second notes down a little bit in volume. Now I'm going to select the panning and I'm just going to pan them around the stereo field a little bit. I've noticed that at the end of the bar, this hat accent doesn't really work. It's kind of slightly out of time. I'll just let you hear it right now. It's a little bit early. So what I'm gonna do is use the graph editor to shift that along a little bit. So I'm gonna push it along in time. And it works a little bit better like that. Once you're done with the graph editor, you can just press the button up there to get rid of it. Something to mention, and I'm just gonna solo the snare to show this, is that the channel panning and volume are independent of the ones in the graph editor. So if I pan the snare, say 50% to the left, and then inside the graph editor, I pan it 50% right again, you've effectively canceled yourself out but if I leave it in the center, it's still going to be 50% left just because that was what's actually in the sampler channel information. It's been panned from within here. And the same for the volume. If you put the velocity all the way up in here, these are not going to change. So you could move these up and down and they're not going to actually change the volume inside here. I just thought that was a subtle point that was probably worth mentioning. I said that I'd demonstrate what the swing function does. And the best way to do this is probably actually to open up the image line manual you can see that the swing adds a rhythm to the steps. So if there's no swing, all of the steps are going to be perfectly in time. But if you add swing, it's going to take the second and the third steps and push them out of time slightly just to add a little bit of groove. So even though the step comes directly on the beat, the sample won't be played until a little bit later. I'm going to show a few more group options now. So if you select a group, you can also zip them. And this isn't this isn't like zipping a project. This is just it just zips them up like that to save you a little bit of space. You can still find out what they are by clicking on them like this. And then the easiest way to unzip them is to simply right click on them and then they just expand back. That's not something I use all the time, but if a project gets really big, you can just collapse them, it makes life a little bit easier. Going back to the channel options again, there's a few more options. Having it detached all the time is really handy because it means it's not going to disappear whenever you click somewhere else on FL Studio. And then the channel button width is what I showed earlier. You can just resize uh, side to side and then you can auto resize this so that it works with either maximum height where it's just going to give you as much as space as you can on the screen or you can turn it to minimum height so that it takes up as little space on the screen as possible. I tend to have it just floating around in, in space getting in the way like a bit of a nuisance but at any time you can just drag and sort of dock it to anything else. You can dock it to the side of the mixer or the side of the playlist or the side of the browser. So you can have it set up somewhere that you always know where it's going to be, or you can just do what the rest of us do and just sort of have it floating around in space inside your project. Right clicking on a sample gives you a few more options. So you can rename the sample, you can change the color and give it an icon. You can also copy the pattern information. So if I fill some steps in and I copy, I can paste those steps into the next. And this is great when maybe you're layering snare samples or hi-hats and you've programmed something pretty specifically and you don't want to have to do it again. You can just copy and paste it over. Another, another incredibly useful feature is when filling in steps, for instance, on the hi-hats, I wanted four steps, but they're not in the right place. If I play everything together, they're out. If I rotate them right or left, one more. 
they're in time the way I want them to be. If you like the patterning you had on a specific uh, sample, for instance, this hi-hat, but you didn't like the sample, you can just grab a different sample and drag it directly on top. And then your MIDI information or your sequence is still going to remain, but the sample's changed. So that covers all the basics of how to use the channel rack inside FL Studio 20. I do hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.